The one thing I struggled the most as a photographer in the beginning was my white balance. I just could not get it right. I thought I was pretty good at, you know, eyeballing it, but then once I learned how to take a custom white balance, things changed for me. Everything seemed like was wrong. My portrait photography seemed they were way too co cool tone and my um, studio shots, they were too warm tone. So I'm gonna show you today the tools I use to make sure that I have a correct white balance. I'm gonna show you how to use them, when I use what, and how to take a custom white balance on camera. We'll do all that in this video. I'm gonna start with what I'm using. I have a few of them. I have this, and I'll have links below on all this uh, if you're interested. I have Lastolite, it looks like this. And this one is my favorite, I use it all the time. I, I folds really small. I can just fold it like this, throw it in a you know pocket or in my camera bag. And then when I get what I wanted to take the photos, I will just take a custom white balance using this gray card and I'll show you how to do that. And then also has a white side on the other side, which I use often for to just to bounce some light into my shot. For example, if I'm like out hiking into the woods and I find this like perfect mushroom, but it just doesn't have any light, isn't the shadow, I'll use this to bounce some light into it and make my photo a lot better. I have another, and this is the one I use in the studio work too a lot. Then I have this one that is just small like this, and this is what I use if I will do portrait shoots or flower photography or stuff like that. For portraits, I'll just have the model hold it close to their face. And then when I go to Lightroom, I make sure I use the white balance eyedropper tool and sample this gray card. And I will make sure that I have correct white balance for the whole shoot. Um, this is very easy to carry around. You can just put it around your neck and put it in your pocket, whatever. It works great. Another tool I have, it's the color checker. You probably seen one of this. Um, you open it and it has all these colors. And this is very good tool if you wanna get very accurate colors. We'll talk about this in a second. And also the other side has a white and gray card that you can use for white balance. Makes a lot of noise when you open it and close it. I do have another one tool. This is an Espo disc. It looks like this. And this one you hold it in the front of your lens and then you shoot towards the camera from your subject. That way it measures the light that comes into the subject. I don't use this one so much. I use it for a little bit and I find it not so accurate. Now let's talk a little bit more about, let's see the color checker. Color checker, I use it mostly for paid uh, photo shoots, especially when you're working with brands. For example, if you're photographing a candle and it has a blue label and you're photographing it and your white balance is not accurate, my, the blue label might look a little bit green. And your client is not gonna be happy with that because they probably took months to find the perfect kind of blue for that label. And you just altered that and it's not, does not represent their brand. So this one, it's easy to use. You take a photo where you can see all the little color checkers, and then you take it into Lightroom and you send it into the plugin, you download the software for this, and then it gives you a, a color profile for your camera for the shot that you did. Sometimes, for example, when I do, um, Product photography, I use it, I do it in the studio. My table is always pretty much on the same spot. I use the same studio lights. I use my AD600 Pro with the AD400 Pro. So my color balance doesn't shift between shoots. And I just did one of these color checkers with those light in the studio, uh, close the curtain so I don't get any ambient light. And now I save that into my Lightroom and every time I take a product shoot, I will just use that color profile and I get accurate colors every time. This one, we did talk about it. You just hold it next to the model, use the eyedropper tool, and you know, you get an accurate white balance and post. Now, how do we take a custom white balance in camera so we don't have to deal with it in post? Well, I will show you just that. I use a Sony camera, so I'm gonna show you on my Sony camera how I do it. But uh, you, I'm assuming it's pretty much the same on any camera, so it can be too different. You go into your camera, mine, for my Sony camera, this is the Sony A1. It's in this pink tab. And then you go to white balance, white balance, and then custom, I set mine to custom tree. I always take a custom white balance and I use custom tree. Then you go to set, 
click on it and then that little yellow square you just go to click anywhere where your gray card is and click it and there you go it captured the custom white balance and now i'm good to shoot and my white balance is going to be perfect that is until of course if all my settings are changing somehow then you know that's not going to work out then you have to take a new custom white balance so as you see it's not very hard but it does make a big big difference and even though you if you think you're good at um fixing your white balance and post because i always shoot in raw and shooting in raw does allow you to adjust your white balance and i do but i just never never really that accurate and a simple tool like this that is very small and just folds into your backpack can really help you to elevate your photography and make your photos look right in the beginning like I said, my uh, portraits, they're always too blue. I don't know why when I was editing skin tones, my white balance, I always seem to go towards the blue. And now that I am a more seasoned photographer, when I go look back at my old portraits that I was taking, I'm like, all oh, the people I photographed, they look sick. They look just pale and blue. So the same thing with my white balance in the studio in the begin as a beginner. And I see that now in a lot of beginners. Um, they will take photos on their living room because they don't have a studio. So they will use their living room, their kitchen, bedroom, whatever they have. And um, even if you use, let's say you use a strobe and you know your strobe, it's a 5,000 Kelvin uh, temperature and you set your camera to 5,000 Kelvin. Well, you will still not get accurate white balance because in a small place, you probably have green walls or you have brown furniture or who knows what. And the light will bounce around and will give you a color cast. So your whites will not be white. They will have that brownish look, green look, whatever you have around. So by using something like one of these tools, you don't need them all. You only need one. This is my favorite one that I use all the time. And uh, this one seems to be very accurate. And uh, yes, just something as small and as cheap as these, it could save your photos. And uh, I'll leave links for all of these um, tools in the description below. I hope this was helpful. I strongly encourage you to do custom white balance for every one of your shoots. Um, thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video.